And they will battle the Clinks as the last band. Evil Genius is coming up for their last pick. Um, they already have a Lich. They have an Ogre, Clockwork, Razor. So they need to pick Fierce Hero more than likely here. Yeah. Although I say that, and I really don't know what PPD has is up to sleeve. So Yeah, but I, the Clinks ban, I think, is a really, really good one. That That's a hero that I think could create a lot of problems for their lineup and a hero that I think we're going to see. We've already seen in the early days of 6.2. And I think we're going to see more and more. I, I just, Maude, I have to give get this stat out of the way Ten early seconds. on. We, we don't, we'll we never talk about it again, but yeah, PGG does have a 5-17 and 17 oh, career record uh, on his Enigma in pro matches. So yeah. there, that's out there. We're, we, we don't have to talk about it anymore. We can just see in, uh, in the next 15 seconds or so of their reserve time what the fifth pick is going to be for EG. Well, we'll let chat react to the PGG and Enigma if that is going to be what he's playing, which more than likely is. Evil yeah. Geniuses, six seconds left from reserve time. They want, dis they want the distance with this draft for both squads. And for Evil Geniuses, they grab the Sven oh, yeah. and Fear's old standby. And... Uh, and not really that shocking when you when you think about it. Well, <laughs> against the DP, Sven is just such a good pick because, of course, a huge chunk of her damage output is going to be coming out from that exorcism, particularly in those pivotal mid-game team fights. And the new War Cry is just is sick level unbelievable at seven seconds duration only on a 14 second cooldown 16 bonus armor for only 25 mana. Second. that that ability it just shuts down heroes like Five bristleback seconds. and dp Clean. that rely on that sustained physical damage and i actually really like the rubik pick here at the end there's there's a lot on the side of eg that they can steal here uh, not bad and and they are going to as we talked about in first draft uh they've been switching roles up here a little bit it looks like they're going to run a tri lane around and universe here and it oh is going to be a core ogre playing it we're in the game and we'll see how eg pans out with this one i i, I don't know if i'm the biggest oh. fan of this draft from evil geniuses in comparison to yeah. m5 yeah. i just think m 5s drafts a bit more solid i like the idea for evil geniuses and i like the fact that rt's is on razor because he just he i mean he wins a lot. I mean, that that's just, that's a good high win rate for him. Is this the set? Is this the, no, this is a different set. Oh, unfortunate. But yeah, Core, core Ogre, certainly an exciting uh, prospect here. And it looks like they might go aggro trial in with the universe. Oh, uh, sure. Universe I mean, are you serious? Uh, PPD, Lich, Fear, Ogre, and, and Universe Sven in a tri lane? That, that's just... That's scary, stupid. Now, I fear, of course, uh, I got a little overexcited there. Again, EG does swap roles out. Fear uh, had a period of time where he played support last year with the old EG roster, and you know their results weren't necessarily uh, uh, what they wanted, it. but he played support very, very well. He, he had some uh, Nyx Assassin and Rubik games that I still remember. Uh, so there's not necessarily a core Ogre Magi, but still, we should we should get to see some fireworks. Yeah, this will be. They're, they're going to run this aggro trial, or maybe a dual lane. Uh, I'm not sure. They have Fear who's roaming around. He has boots, and it looks like he's heading to the top room spot just to make sure Zai can get his block off. Zai's clockwork I've seen in person. It's quite good. It's a lot better than Universe's. No offense to Universe. I mean, he's pretty good. Dam he's a pretty damn good player, but double damage rune. Oh no. Oh god. If Universe is able to get this double damage involved, they can easily get an early kill here. Against Viper, even if he goes for level 1 corrosive skin, there still is the potential for him to go down. <laughs> yeah, they killed Kingar with Telekinesis, but I, I don't know if this is going to go well for M5 at the start of this game. And it looks like it will be dual lanes coming out from EG. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not surprised to see this. Uh, I think you're going to start seeing dual lanes make a little bit of a return, and you know, not necessarily because I think dual lanes are are, are OP mm. or anything, but just uh, because of the, uh, the flexibility that the current meta lends you. Yeah. Um. 40 seconds in and already universe and is just getting a lot of room to work with top lane they it's a tool 212 right now for his and fear they have uh, ignite level one they're actually just yeah. right clicking down front he'll just back away and they're getting away with this 212 because you have the enigma in the jungle and that's not a huge surprise wow. and they're not really doing anything to stop him they're not concerned about pgg in the jungle currently and it's not just in the jungle, okay? It's part of the reason that you can run these dual lanes is the ogre. He is just so tanky early in the game and able to trade so effectively. And, and this ignite, it, it tremendously mana efficient for the harass early on.
Yeah, it's really solid, even at level one. You, you'll probably see Fury get it to level two before they really uh, yeah. start, you know, maxing out Fire Blast and getting Bloodlust levels. But um, that, that yeah. shouldn't be a huge surprise. One thing I'm worried about is with the dual lane, your Clockwork's not going to get as much experience. Although they are pulling, so Zai should be just fine. Um, for M5, they're doing the same thing down bottom. They're pulling and trying to get Blow Your Brain to farm. And this is a hero I really want to see Blow Your Brain on because it's a less of a kind of late game hero that they played and more of a let's fight early, which I think they really want to have Blow Your Brain do. They want to have him fight early and often. Right. So, no, it, It's definitely a hero. This is what I was talking about, addressing some of those deficiencies via the draft. Maybe a little action down here if, if King R gets a little too far out. Yeah, they, you see he's yeah. taking some damage, but Look Universe that is also though. taking right click. And, I mean, that's Warcry and Boots. Universe literally is just the fastest man alive, so they can't do anything about that. He'll walk back to lane, he'll continue to get CS. He's leading the farm, unsurprisingly. Mid lane is going pretty well in favor of, well, oh, it's, it's pretty even, but... Yeah, but this could be really, really bad here in a second, because uh, I feel like Fear, if Vigas gets forward at all in lane here, Fear has this kill whenever he wants it. it does I mean, they, blast, they know I he's gone. They have no Observer War, that's the thing, but I don't yeah. know if they really need it. The, the problem is going up against Vigas, although he doesn't have boots yet. Uh, he's still pretty quick. However, no boots early on. Vigas could get caught out. Fire Blast is going to go. Arteezy running up level 2 statically. I don't yeah, know if they this can is enough damage. This. They, can they might this. dive it. They have Plasma Fuel. That'll give them mid vision as well. And Arteezy will get the first blood. Taking damage to the tower. Arteezy will take a hit or two, I believe, as well. But um, I'm sure he's got a bottle coming out currently. And, and Ogre is just going to go back home. And yeah, there is the bottle for Arteezy roaming out as well. So... PGG does take over mid lane experience over, but nice gank on Vigas early on, and they're trying to shut him down again. Yeah, and it, look, it's it's not just about being able to trade in lane. I mean, look at that ogre with the with the seven armor now at level two, thirty percent physical damage resistance, and that just it sets up those early aggressive plays, the tower dives. It's it's not just being able to zone out uh, and trade with uh, with your off laner. It it just does so much for you in terms of being able to be aggressive around the map. Yep. So, yeah, and now, he's gonna he's gonna smoke up and try and create something bot here, and this is, I mean, this is just what fear does. He's just he is an aggressive player of whatever role, and this is why I like to see players that can switch roles. I just I, I just think it it brings this great mindset. Yeah, and the, but the problem is ganking up against the vipers not gonna be the easiest task with level two corrosive skin. But at the same time, a, a tri versus dual situation. Fury should be able to get this kill. He's actually maybe waiting in the jungle for PGG. He's not going to find him. They're yeah. going to head back to the lane. Uh, Stormhammer's about to go here from Universe. He's thinking about using it. Not in yeah, range. Now it goes on Blow Your Brain. Fire Blast comes in. Telekinesis. That'll push him back onto PPD, but there's the Fire Blast. Blow Your Brain is still tanky. He will be able to walk away and actually secure his uh, support to get out, but Universe will grab the kill. And uh, he picks up his treads as well. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's clinical. I mean, the minute, the minute, be, uh, the minute the viper gets that far up in lane, uh, it, it's just a free kill. And yeah, you're right. Uh, Fear had been hanging around in the jungle, maybe hoping to catch King R, but uh, just, just too easy there. Oh, oh look at this! I don't think King R saw him. King R is actually looking he didn't. for Fear. And that's a beautiful path eaten oh, by no, Fear, but King R sees him now, and he will try to catch him out of position. But look at this! However, look at how look at how little damage the Rubik does. He can kill him one v one. Yeah, Fear is gonna man up. There's Telkin. He's gonna push him back, but actually, King R is probably dead. I think King R just killed himself. What? Yeah, he he did. <laughs> I don't know about that. That was a bit questionable from King R, but. A free kill going the way of evil geniuses. Fear getting involved. He's like, okay, thank you for the kill. I'm gonna go back home now and get some mail. Bye, guys. <laughs> so, Dude, you're you're Rubik. I mean, I I think you just kind of maybe got confused. Thought he was a different hero. You don't like you just don't walk up to an ogre anymore. I mean, even Centaur would have to be a little careful doing that. Yeah, I I think that was just a misplay coming out. King Ar gets brought low. He gets down. And another free kill for evil geniuses, and they, they still have plenty of farm going their way. The one issue is PGG's farming up the storm, unsurprisingly, on the Enigma. Now the question is, what can he make done with this? What can he get going with this for PGG? With the soul ring up, he'll get boots, he'll probably get towards a mech, I imagine. Top lane, they are going to rotate some heroes over, but so does EG. Fear comes in, Zai coming in, double edge might be used. They do have Stampede, Zai comes in, he's got Hookshot. Cogs are going to go through, oh, not yeah. connecting. Tron can still Centaur Stampede up if he wants to. Hookshot is yeah, on King R. To. Meanwhile, he will oh, get hooked my up. Goodness. It's done by Zai getting it going. Flair will grab the kill. Somehow he gets it done. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they will kill Lich coming out. PGG coming through using his Midnight Pulse and Malphite to grab the kill. So, yeah, that was. Trade. 
really important for M5 to get some kind of a trade there to get them on the board in this match. I mean, uh, really, really well executed sequence by Zai. It, it, you can see it's not just about stunning the centaur out of his, out of his stampede. Here's that, I think. Telkin needs to see, get the fire blast up. And he will throw the ignite as well, getting blocked by Zai. Battery assault coming through. He does cog him out, but Zai taking a lot look of the damage here. Serious? But look at this battery assault coming in. Zai gets an easy kill. Frost blast as well. And all of a sudden, it's getting away from Moscow 5 yet again. And uh, EG just having some more solid plays, whereas that's a level one. That's a level one ultimate with two points in witchcraft coming up from. Yeah, a little bit suspect there. I was going to point that skill build out. I mean, it, it, it look, I, I am not necessarily a fan of putting off the ulti to level 8 or level 9 because I think it provides a degree of safety in lane. If somebody dies, uh, dives you, you turn yeah. on that ulti and live. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, uh, yeah, that's not the point with that hero where you want to go on the offensive. Zai trying to juke up here against Tron. Yeah, I mean, he is in some trouble. The Cogs are going to go. He's going to get stomped in double edge. And you now it's a good try side, but Tron does get the kill, which is much needed. RTZ, meanwhile, bottom lane going to town. Does get the kill on the Viper. PGG getting chased down. Universe not going any further. He has no mana for Stormhammer. And decides yeah, to back away, so. And they know Black Hole is up. Yeah. The one thing is that they are going to be able to put pressure on these towers with Exorcism and with Eidolons. So that if they want to fight, they can try, or want to push, they can try, but... And, and we always talk about how you transition into the late game with an ogre. Hold that thought. PPD stampede until Kinesis down. And uh, they don't go okay. for the kill. TP rotation. It, it is coming from his eye, but they could have gotten that. That was just a little bit bizarre. I'm not sure how to call that. I'm not I'm sure how to call that. You know, Kingar gets caught out on the back end of it. He falls and EG take another decisive lead here. Again, we talk a lot about how fear is going to transition into the late game on an ogre. He's had a good start, but you really needed to get, I think, your uh, arcanes into ags, and then you're in a really good position, honestly. He does go for tranquils, actually, so he doesn't really want the mana, apparently, um, which nah, is very dude. interesting for me. I don't really know if that's a build that we see too often, but I, I think it's fine. Remember so. uh, remember the change a while back where the, the unrefined fire blast yes. from your ags is now a percentage of your current mana rather than a fixed amount. So Ogre can actually get away without like stacking mana items. He can still use he can still use both Fire Blast now. I'm not necessarily saying that Tranquils is the way to go, uh, but I at least understand the thinking now. My, my problem with that is though is that you're you're assuming you're getting Agadem Scepter, which I mean he probably could, but he's no, still very go, far away. He'll probably go something like Blink first. Yeah, I mean that's the you're you're gonna have to rotate I think back home a lot. Meanwhile, RTZ is a haste room. PGG might even just have to use his black hole to survive here. Or yeah, there it is. His static link is still going. Arteezy actually in trouble. They can stop him. Telkinesis, he's still a lot of damage. It's not going to matter. Ignite and Fire Blast coming through. M5, that's a huge kill that they needed. And Arteezy getting a bit overconfident. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, way overconfident knowing that that's, you know, people talk about the threat of the black hole sometimes being more significant than the black hole itself. And, and I mean, Enigma only casts black hole uh, a little over four times on average in a pro match. But I mean, that's why the threat of the black hole is so significant that you misposition yourself a little bit and it's a kill. Oh, shot in on the boy. brain and he's had one rough game currently. He's not dead yet. Flair's coming out. Stormhammer, that'll kill him. And uh, now they're diving. They're looking for King R. He's going to go into the trees, and Universe is going to cut off his path. The pincer move comes out. King R, he's blocked in. You can't go anywhere, buddy, unfortunately. And King R looks like he may fall. He's juking quite effectively, however, wasting a lot of time for evil geniuses. But he does go down in the end. And uh, another two kills going the way of EG. So... And, yeah. and I just want to highlight, Zai is just playing so magnificently with this game. I mean, people talk about, all right, so we will have an engagement here in mid. I'll hold that point for a second. Since okay. our stampedes and he's fine. Anyways, continue. You know, people talk about a hookshot being a skill shot. It obviously is, but you know, it, all hookshots are not created equal. When you talk about hookshots and hooks, I mean, the angle at which you approach engagements and the way that you use your other skills, particularly cogs, to zone the enemy heroes, those can make the angles on your hookshots a lot easier or harder. And Zai has just been approaching these fights very, very well to open up those angles for himself. I mean, the individual hookshots have looked easy. But that's because he set them up incredibly well. Yeah, and 
It just seems like he's he's really got a good understanding of the hero. Exactly. But at the same time, Moscow Five, they do have PGG on the Enigma. This is his hero. Um, he's getting a mech, and and we'll see oh. if he can get some big black holes and and even some early pushing, which I think is more important. And I talk the last time I casted with fourteen well, seven. Uh, Death Prophet's dead. Oh. I mean, a Blade Mail at eleven minutes and a level ten clockwork is just. Thanks for playing, Death Prophet. Like, yeah. it, it, there's really nothing you can do that on that hero. Early blade mail just screws her over so badly. Especially when you go for the early point in exorcism, which we talked about. But right, right. Um, it, it, that's not going to be their way back in the game, at least not until she hits level 11 and level 12. But I think um, uh, when you're relying on a black hole to try to win the game, though, that's also the issue. And, and 437 talked about that a bit when I cast it with him. It's just that you, you never want to have to rely on a black hole to win you the right. game. So I think pushing and putting Midnight Pulses on the ground and fighting with that is more important than anything else in the game currently. No, that's um, exactly right. And that's part of why you it's part of why you don't see Enigmas uh, rush that Blink Dagger nearly as often as you used to six months or so go i mean enigma is a is is much more of a zoning hero now uh which is fine but again eg you know they're gonna by the time this enigma even if he does go for a bkb oh boy tron maybe in, in some trouble here he's got the stampede if he needs it no he is not gonna use it yet universe does pop his god strike there's no point in re-engaging on the back end of that uh, Black Hole is still not ready yet for another three seconds. Meanwhile, Universe chasing after King R, but there's the Telekinesis and the Stampede, but he's so fast for Haste Rune, Warcry. Godstrength still up for another second or two. They're looking for a fight. They might find it. Here comes Spear. Big Storm Hammer, big Fire Blast. PGG does pop the Black Hole. What can they get on the back end of this? Couple of Crypt Swarms. Blink Stop, maybe. No. Silence comes in. PGG getting chased down still. Bully Break comes in, but here comes RTZ. RTZ comes in with a Plasma Field. Gets one kill. Universe gets the other. Three now down. Blow Your Brain getting chased as well. Hook shot in long range from Zai. Gets it done again. Viper Strike, Chain Frost, Storm Hammer, double kill for Universe. EG now. Back in the lead by a wide margin, and they're chasing after the Death Prophet. Uh, Vigos in some trouble. Oh, Peepity cool. walks into a Crypt Swarm, though, and he just gets obliterated. It's like he got clotheslined, and Vigos will TP away afterwards, so. Yeah, I mean, they, they get something out of that at the very end for M5. I mean, you know, Vigos not having a, a bad game on his Death Prophet, even though the, the laning phase just went disastrously, disastrously horrible for him. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really looking looking bleak here for M5. Yeah, absolutely. So Moscow Five are they, the thing is that there's only one tower gone from them. But the problem for me is that they really yeah, don't. Yeah, but that's that's not the metric anymore. I mean, they don't I, win late game. I don't think in this situation, I, even with Death Prophet, I'm not sure RTZ is going to get an Agnum oh, Center no. and the you know, Universe is going to get whatever he wants to get. He has a Blink already, and he has the Morbid Mask as well. So. I mean, the big thing for me is is to ask the question, how are M5 going to reestablish map control, right? Because it just feels like EG are going to be able to control so much of the map so easily. Stampede coming through top lane. Braun getting caught out, he'll fall. Meanwhile, PGG getting hook shotted on. Zai going to work. They jump in. They grab the kill. Universe blinks right into the cogs and gets it done. Yeah, I mean, they're just so well equipped to to win these 2v2 and 3v3 engagements as well as the big 5v5 fights right now that uh, it's very, very hard to position your heroes around the map as M5 in, in positions where they're just not extremely vulnerable. I, and they're just getting caught out too much, and, and Enigma is... They're not really pressuring the towers. They did get two tier ones, which is, I, I think, a, a good position for them. Zai is sitting, however, and they getting some farm top lane. Mid lane, they're just the sitting head. around. They're ready to maybe push or, or think about fighting elsewhere. Bottom lane is his Arteezy teeping away. His Ags is pretty much done yet again. This time, not as early as it was last game, but... Uh, still, and, and Fear is going to go ahead and try and build into the Ags. Well, assuming he's not just going to... Uh, go totally crazy and go for the bloodstone, but uh, tranquils into ags is 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 not bad. I, I don't know that it's that I would go for it in as many games as I would arcanes, but I understand the thinking. And I mean, they just they have a gargantuan lead here. Uh, they can basically take Roche for free if they want it, but I, I'm not sure they even need it. Uh, at this point, it's just another objective for them to take. If they can't take towers, they might as well take Roche on get it in, in, in ages, but they don't need to, like you talked about. And for Moscow 5, suddenly not even, you know, the Death Prophet is up at the top. And she's sitting, you know, third behind some of the, all, all of the cores of Evil Geniuses. And she's trying to get that Yule Scepter, and she's just having a rough game. Universe manning up a PGG. God strength going in. PGG will back away and stay alive, but... 
Yeah, and, and that that's a big deal because a kill on the Enigma there and the Black Hole is out of play at least for a little while. Uh, they, they will have the Enigma alive with Black Hole to defend what uh, what I think is going to be a big push here by EG. Yeah, that tier one tower getting assaulted. Cartesi has eggs and he just pops it for a tier one tower that he doesn't even really need to use it for. But it's going to fall nonetheless. Meanwhile, hook in coming on Blow Your Brain, getting caught out. Cogs are ready to go. They do steal a spell. I'm not sure what. Looks like it was just Ice Armor. It's not really what you want. King R getting blown up. He'll fall. PGG cancel the black hole. It got us. Oh my god, the battery assault making sure it gets off only for half a second coming out from Zai. And they're looking for more in the back end, but they really can't find anything. Everyone has went back to the base here for Moscow 5, and uh, now they're going to pressure up into the Tier 2 tower here as well. Yeah, the uh, the old signature move coming out there, unfortunately, in the fight. And again, you see, I mean, EG have the kind of lineup and they have the kind of items in lead at this point where they're not afraid to force engagements 2v3, 3v4. And they're going to try to find uh, Tron up here in the top lane. They won't be able to secure the kill. The universe pops the Mask of Madness. No, no way they get that. He could have blinked in, but he actually blinked to get up towards that top jungle. And now EG take over the bottom jungle as well. They're just farming the entire map here. Uh, Clockwork picks up a Vitality Booster. Who knows what Zai will turn that into. Um, maybe just a casual one. Blow Your Brain is desperately trying to get to an Aggative Scepter. He doesn't need to build a mech, but not his best game either. Four deaths to his name, and, and I really wanted to see how he could play this Viper, and it's just not going well for him in the end, yeah. so... I mean, again, at the end of the day, we talked about uh, the draft from M5 being very much geared toward the laning phase in this game. And, and unfortunately, when you lose the laning phase with this kind of a draft, uh, you're seeing what happens. I mean, the Viper, again, not doing badly, but uh, just succumbing to the incredible pressure that EG is putting on everywhere on the map. I, another hook by Zai. This guy is out of his mind right now. Zai will grab yet another kill. Arteezy actually picks it up. They're looking for more on the back end. They want PGG, but he's just going to run away. And now they can put pressure mid. They can put pressure top and try to get that tier one tower, which they've yet to grab. And for Evil Geniuses, it almost feels like it's just take bites, take down towers, take bites, take down towers, take objectives. That's what they're doing. Yep. You know, ad nauseum. So... And, and that's kind of how you have to play now in 6.82. I mean, 6.82 favors a much more methodical pushing approach. You don't death ball and, and go right in down one of the lanes early on and try for a T3. You kind of apply pressure methodically around the map, and that's what EG has been so good at doing here. And boy, yeah. Blow might be in trouble yet again. Viper Strike is going to stop Arteezy from chasing after him. Centaur Stampede used as well. Blow Your Brain turning around to right-click him once. Plasma Field only gets the tail end of Blow Your Brain. And uh, RTZ has to back away. Great Viper Strike coming out. And, well, RTZ still has 2,000 gold to bank, though, so his next setup should be done soon. Blinking Universe going on to, well, that poor Vegas is done. Hookshot into the PGG. He has Black Hole. He can't even use it. He gets. Oh my god. EG take two more fights. Meanwhile, Botic Stampede not available. King R getting caught out. Ignite again coming up from Fear. Fire Blast is there as well. They will pop it. King R getting right click down. Frost Blasted. They will grab the kill. Killing spree for PPD. Now chasing after them is Blow Your Brain. He's got his poison attack ready to go. I don't think he can get either of these kills. In fact, he's going to back away despite not having anybody here. Um, so Blow Your Brain just trying to do what he can. And guys, she's, uh, guys, Frost Armor is really good. Like yeah. we talked about Warcry uh, during the draft, which I feel like is a, a super underrated ability. But Frost Armor probably even more so. I mean, you just saw like Arteezy was at about twenty percent HP, and Tron Centaur TP'd in and thought he had an easy kill there. He double edge stomp combos. Arteezy is one hit away from going down, and and the poor Centaur looked like he was in slow motion, trying to land that last overhand smash to end Arteezy's life. And that's just it's because of the Frost Armor. All right, Arteezy, you're 19 minutes and you have an Aghanim Scepter and Treads. What are you going to build next? I think we're going to go for a Midas, everybody. Oh, Just, why not? I mean, all right, okay. I, I, I mean, he's made some bad item decisions before. I don't know if that's one of them, but... Well, I mean, again, as we mentioned in the last match, you know, you're, you're 14K gold up at the 20-minute mark. It's, I mean, the players are having a bit of fun at this point. It's, it's, it's tough to judge. Yeah, that's true. Bloodlust uh, getting used on Arteezy, that makes him even more scary to deal with. Mid lane, finally, looks like there's going to be an M5 ball up coming here. And this is, 
You gotta be, if they lose this engagement, if they decide to go for it, I don't know if they can take this game. They're, they're already so far behind. 14,000 net worth, experience-wise, 15,000. So, and it looks like Zai might just try to force this fight on his own. Oh, why Walks not? in, flares up, Universe Stormhammer coming in, hookshot, light go, play mill, stop up, that is not gonna help. The Universe getting blown up, however, the Mask of Madness was turned off with the Chain Frost coming in, they blow up a couple heroes, and Chain Frost still bouncing, King R and Vigos chasing after. Zai, but he has actually got some help coming in, maybe. No, they're backing away from the exorcism. And Zai getting caught out. There's the blade mode coming through. Battery assault coming. Oh, Stormhammer was stolen. They will grab the kill. Zai getting caught out. Big pickup there. They lose three heroes, but at the very least, they get some gold going their way. All the while, though, Arteezy is putting some pressure on this bottom tower. Looking for the tier two. He has his eye of the storm going, and it looks like he will take it. And they have him good, however, and they will pop it, so. Yeah, and M5 definitely, uh, you know, the new bounties aren't necessarily uh, game-defining as they were in the original 6.82, but uh, they're enough that M5 came out on the winning end of that engagement. But again, uh, th this is the kind of lead for EG where, you know, you want to get back in this game. It's not enough to get those kinds of trades. I mean, those those bounties can make a difference, but uh, not in a match like this. You, you need, need like five, six, you, seven more of those. Yeah, exactly. And, and you try to trade without losing three heroes. Right. next time but uh for m5 i mean you have tron he's going towards that four step if you can get that mobility item they maybe survive a bit longer my problem is that vigas has really no items other than a four staff um and wow. i decided to go for a bloodstone because why the hell not you know yeah, actually when you have a, a big lead like this bloodstone is is really really good True. right the the act of suicide as a way to just especially on an initiator like clockwork who is going to be in the middle of everything doing damage with that blade mail it's a good way to prevent feeding away a lot of gold. God. Tron gets caught yeah. up by another hook shot. Zai going to work with Battery Salt. Jump in. Universe says, I will secure this kill, friends. Do not yeah. worry. And he takes that it. That is an unhappy horse, man. <laughs> he really just gets caught again. And Tron, with the force step, might have been, might have been able to live there. But they are catching Arteezy in the mid lane. He does get the Frost Armor. They will bring him back out, but he's very low. Taking a lot of damage from Corrosive Skin. The poison attack does bring him down. And, yeah. Uh, God strength again for Universe. Time to man up, boys. Zai has no hookshot for another 20 seconds. This is the problem without going for an Agonim Scepter. Here we go, though. PGG, he does have Black Hole, but I don't think he can get it off. Universe is going to bring him down. Malphite is going to go. PGG goes down. Fear chasing you have to blow your brain. He's going to be up to the high ground. Universe still going the right click. Going to come through. Four step forward from Zai. Fire Blast going. Blow your brain. About to fall. Flare? They can't find him. He jukes him away. Hook shot in. Zai gets the kill. Double kill for Universe, actually. And Zai commits suicide. Uh, what? Celebratory suicide. I don't sure, know what happened there. That, that's a thing. Well, okay, I guess. Yeah, I, I I'm, <laughs> he was I'm at full struggling health, right? here, my friend. He was at full health, wasn't he? Or or at least doing well. I mean, he, he had no way of dying. By the way, so. Universe just has a casual Daedalus. Cause, nice. Yeah, that that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, Arteezy, with his 20-minute uh, Midas, is going to go ahead and build into a Refresher Orb, which he's probably going to have by mm, 26, 27 minutes, and that's going to be insane. Those of you with uh, problems with seizures, please don't watch the screen too closely, because yeah, that zap. double Razor ulti is a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an item choice that when... Before Razor was picked a lot, and that was that that was the item of choice for a long period of time. It was just it's straight into actual pressure, but uh, you you kind of saw him not build that as much recently. However, PPD is going to get caught out. Poison attack. There's the fire blast. Fear getting viper struck as well. Here comes Universe. He's flying in. Universe throws up the storm hammer. And the right click coming out. Meanwhile, exorcism going. Fear getting low and also chasing down Universe as well. But Zai jumps in with a hook shot, grabs two. And there's the force out, but they will grab the kill on the Death Prophet before her ultimate can do really any damage. Universe goes down as well to Tron, jump back in, static link, and Zai getting yet another kill. Two for two exchange. I believe there was a buyback, I'm not sure from who, it looks like it was from uh, PPD as well as PGG. So they're both going to go down it looks like. No. And PGG will back away and RTZ can go back on the tower here in just a moment. Uh, if he wants to. Eye of the Storm is down, however, and he is building towards the refresher like you talked about, which is still kind of a ways away. Yeah, I mean, it, Universe has basically been a PGG-seeking missile in these fights. He has made it his mission to just blink in and end PGG's existence before that black hole can come into play. In the process, though, he has been dying. Now, speaking of dying, Tron actually does force out, so I might not be able to get this kill. 
Uh, TP to the top lane for Arteezy. He's not going to help out. Blink away. Flare just off the mark there. Would have been able to cancel the Blink Dagger. Hookshot not available. There's no Aghanim Scepter for Clockwork. He might build that next. Centaur Stampede. So Tron can try to get out. And he's going to blink. Oh, he's going on PPD. What a play. Tron in some trouble or getting some trouble going. PPD does pop the Chain Frost. Oh, a one for one exchange. And he has no buyback either. Wow. Okay. And now, I think, oh I, think, uh, I think PPD just killed himself. Well, PGG, blow your brain. They're all chasing down RTZ in fear. Here comes Zai. Blinks in, throws the cogs out. He just bought a blink dagger as well. Pushes them all back. Here comes Universe. Blink, Stormhammer. PGG gets blown up. One hit. Stormhammer stolen. Doesn't matter. Blow your brain. Hook shot in. He's going to fall. Now they're chasing down poor Vigas here. He actually might live. There's no blink taker for fear. And the force away. Too fast. Vigas is just going to walk out. Meanwhile, King R getting brought low. <laughs> the Stormhammer exchange coming out from Universe and King R. He forces to the other side of the alcove. The chasm, if you will. And Zai can't get the kill. Yeah, definitely those two uh, Sages masks that made the difference for Vigos in that fight. Uh, but yeah, EG exerting their dominance here. Uh, I mean, I, what what more is there to say really than uh, Zai buying the uh, nice little blink dagger there? Oh, what is this oh, pause? That's a little unusual. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, obviously there's a DC, but Branker uh, <laughs> Yeah, right. that's that's all I gotta say about that. And then obviously, fear. Arteezy yeah. throwing up the rage faces from the new emoticon pack, which is in the Dota store, by the way. This gives us a good opportunity to sell out, so wow. I'm going to do so. <laughs> uh, guys, $10 for the Dota pit ticket. If you've been enjoying the tournament thus far, we've had some fantastic games. Some of the best games in series I've seen in some time. Um, go ahead and check out the ticket in the Dota store. $10 comes with the Blackpool Sorcerer set, a Lich set that's beautiful. Highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, we do have a reconnection coming back in, so that gave me just enough time to sell out. Nice. Excellent. Hey, yeah. you know what? Without uh, without sponsors, without this kind of stuff, uh, we don't get to bring these games to you guys. So it's true. We That's just the reality these, these of the situation, my friends. Yeah, top tier teams, but you know, we'll see how it goes. As uh, we're in the middle of the game, looks like we will on pause. Fear's gonna run right on top of Vigos. He's gonna try to TP away. Exorcism actually just gets popped, and Fear TPs away smartly. He says, okay, I'm yeah, done here, and, goodbye. And then exorcism down now for 135 seconds. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, an M5. They just can't get anything going right now. 15,000 net worth Radiant disadvantage. Experience-wise, is about the same. Stampede's going to go, and just as that happens, you see the blink coming away. Zai pops the cogs as well. Now Tron's trying to force through, but can't actually make it. <laughs> just any time they try to get a kill... It just somehow goes awry for M5. It just feels like they can't get much done. And I gotta give them credit, they're really sticking in this game, but they're so far behind now that in one big fight probably an EG will take the high ground here, if not the game altogether. And uh, it's just really solid play from Evil Geniuses this time around. Yeah, and, and that's, to me, EG is not playing with a lineup that that is built to get an early lead and get and five man death ball. EG is playing with a lineup that's that's more than happy to take these kinds of skirmishes around the map. They're not afraid of fighting at this point. Well. Meanwhile. Hook shot in. King R forces him away. He's dead, actually. He's just dead. Meanwhile, top lane. PGG and blow your brain looking for well, they're trying to find something here. RTZ backs away smartly. Double damage for Universe. He'll bottle that up. Because if you needed more damage on Universe already, I mean, that's yeah. actually just ridiculous. And I mean, PGG makes the smart play and TP's out. Zai and Universe are, are just having just crazy good games right now. I mean, you, you expect to see RTZ up there in the net worth on his Razor, but... But yeah, the, the amount of space that Zai and Universe have created everywhere around the map is just crazy. Well... This is uh, this is a bit rough for M5 to say the very least. To put it mildly, PGG getting caught at yet again. Fire blast, unrefined fire blast. Mech coming in, storm hammer, lock him down and kill him, and they do so. And Universe now grabs the kill. Zai uh. misses a hook shot. Blow your brain getting away. It looks like Viper Strike. Universe has Stormhammer, I think, in one second. He does. They will not chase. Coming around to the backside, Tron is here with Vigos. They might jump in and try to take this fight. Arteez is nowhere near the engagement. So something to keep in mind. But they are chasing in. Zai blinks forward. Looking for Blow Your Brain. Can't find it. Zai getting caught out. They will grab another kill on Vigos. That's Sven getting it. Tron getting unrefined fire blasted. Chain Frost is going to go. Tron 
Blinks up or forces up to the high ground. There's the oh, cost to stop it. Beautifully cock. done from Zai. Unbelievable. They blink up with the universe. They wanted to kill him. They got it. All the meanwhile, Arteezy is pushing into the lane, and he gets his refresher done as well. They only have one tier two tower left to take. That's in the top lane, and uh, I don't even need. I don't even know if they need to do that. They could just keep fighting and uh, try to pressure the base and get into the high ground here. Yeah, and and this was such a huge uh, notice that. Fear can just spam this unrefined fire blast every time it's off cooldown because of the mana cost change, right? He's got 39, 40 mana, doesn't matter. No, oh, Zai, look out, buddy. Telekinesis, King R, blow your brain. Viper strike, Zai in some trouble. He's going to try to get out. Nice hook coming through. He doesn't have his Aghanim Scepter. He's getting close to it, but he will make it away. Plasma Field, sieging up to the high ground. PGG, blow your brain, pop the mech, just to keep themselves alive. Again, they have the Aghanims coming up. Blow your brain gets fire blasted. Black Hole coming in. Now PGG with the big one. However, Universe comes in and stops it immediately with the Storm, Bail Storm Hammer. Arteezy refreshes, and uh, he does get the second one off, but they aren't taking the tower. Kind of a waste of the second eye of the storm. Maybe now they're going to do some damage. Absolutely. Look at it. Zap, zap. It's going through. Force away. King R going to try to get out of this fight. Blink. Storm hammer. King R forced away yet again. The kiting is real. Universe getting stomped up. He's actually in trouble. He'll fall. Fear diving too far. Arteezy goes to town on the 2 3 tower, but that's all they get. And Fear gets blown up again. Buyback now coming out. I believe, no, oh. I heard the sound for whatever reason, but I, I guess I didn't, so. And look at Rubik has unrefined fire. Oh, wow, look at this mechanic, by the way. Look at the mana cost on unrefined fire blast on Rubik. So 47. he can steal it even without an Aghanim Scepter, and yes. it's still percentage based on him, too. Interesting. I was wondering how this worked. Well, a mechanic that, I, I'm not sure if it's supposed to work that way, but I think it's certainly interesting nonetheless. I yeah, mean, it's cool. I mean, it is an active. It should be able to be stolen. I just wasn't, I wasn't sure because I was, I was going to comment. Zai chasing Vigos down here, and with uh, 30 seconds on. left on the, on the cooldown on his hook, I'm not sure he's going to get him. Yeah. Yeah, he actually yeah, has no, silence. he can't, he can't use his cogs with his silence, unfortunately. He could have maybe cogged or battery salted, yeah. but no, he, he didn't have any luck there, and He's actually two components away from getting his Aghanim Scepter, and then I think Zai becomes even more of a beast than he already is. He's tanky enough that he'll just survive throughout the fights, and um, he's been playing well enough that he can just hookshot pretty much any hero. And it feels like he can do it from all over the map. Yeah. Um, so the problem for me is right now, this is Enigma, just like you talked about earlier on in the game, is that Universe is just What in the world? Vigos is building Refresher. Yeah, that's... Because... He wants to be able okay. to push... Uh, this is not super surprising for me when you're this far behind you want to have extra no. not only for a fight but for the pushing as well but more so it's, it's just for the fight they, they probably mm. won't be able to win with one extra system they need to win with two and i'm not even yeah. joking this is something that that actually i think is is really necessary for vegas at this point that's one of the only items that might get you back in this game in my opinion yeah i i, I no way i mean if you, you're not going to live through one exorcism much less two in my mind but sure. if you can make it work obviously no, King R barely getting out from RTZ. They will grab the kill on PGG yet again. He has how many deaths to his name? 11! Most in the game, unfortunately, and they're really doing a good job shutting down PGG's Enigma. One of his heroes that uh, you gotta be worried of. But the black holes haven't been there. The PGG holes are unfortunately not really paying off this game. Evil Jiggy says, taking a tier 3 tower, spell with still and he gets rid of unrefined fire blast realizing he would have no mana uh, meanwhile zai jumps in force blank hook shot king are getting caught out zai will grab this kill it looks like no no he can't get up to the high ground there's the ghost scepter zai does however purchase up his agonim scepter unfortunately that was after he used the first uh, hook shot so I'll have to wait yeah. another 25 seconds here, but they will take the... Oh, oh there it is! Okay. Universe, come on, man! Oh, my God. Did you really expect any differently? I, I was like, who on M5 formed a, uh, a break here? <laughs> no. This is no. Universe. Well, man. I mean, you really see here, the thing about the refresher is that uh, Vigas has... Uh, Vigas doesn't even have 1,200 HP. And, I mean, Jesus he's going to die, die in, in how many Two swings from Universe? Eight, maybe. They're going to try to fight Arteezy, who is ulting right now, and he is going to fall. But there's the God Strength coming in. Here we go. Universe going to man up. One hit, two hit, three hits. PGG's done. Double kill. Now he's going to pop the God Strength. There's the Ghost Scepter coming out from King R, staying alive. And he just goes back to the tower. Meanwhile, Fire Blast coming in. Chain Frost as well. PGG. Oh, will they God. dive the well? Blink in. One hit, two hit. PGG's done. Triple kill for Universe. GG finally called the Rapier. No, it stays on. Double Edge Rapier's on the deck. Fear picks it up, however. It's muted. As it should be. And, uh... 
And GG Ogre Magi finishes five. the game with the Divine Rapier. It's it's it could not have played out any other way. I wonder if there's a stat line with uh, how many times Devon Ripley's been finished with Ogre Magic. Oh, they leave it on the ground. Zero. No, come on, you screwed the stats <laughs> That's up. That's hilarious. He screwed the stats up. Oh, uh, uh, it's okay. But great wow. series from Evil Geniuses. Unfortunately, M5, they have a bit of a rough day here. They get off to a really bad start.